So hello, everyone. Uh, good morning to those in Europe. Good afternoon, everyone here in Asia Pacific. And a very late good evening to people, including some of our, uh, our panelists here joining from the Americas. Uh, welcome to this very special Finos Asia Pacific webinar, how open source is driving innovation in financial services and how you can get involved. I'm Julian Gordon. I'm the Asia Pacific VP with the Linux Foundation here in Hong Kong, and I'm delighted to be moderating this keynote event. We're in for a real treat today. The global community at Finos, which is the Linux Foundation's FinTech Open Source Foundation, has been doing amazing things at open source for financial services. And we have today three of the leaders in these developments here to share their expertise and insights on how open source software is driving innovation and how Asia Pacific financial services and FinTech companies can join this collaboration. I think today, a lot of people will further realize they really need to get involved in this uh, foundation. Before I introduce you to our distinguished speakers, I'd like to quickly run through a few housekeeping items. In a second, Finos Executive Director Gabriel uh, Colombo will give us an overview of the amazing work done at the foundation. Then we're gonna go uh, to our panel discussion. Also during the webinar, if you have time, uh, we will do some Q&A. So, so please submit your questions at the bottom there is a Q&A button uh, at the screen. So please enter your questions and we'll try and answer those as we go along. And if we have time, we'll answer that. After the webinar, we'll also, we'll have a recording for, for people to review. With that, I'd like to hand over to our speakers to introduce themselves. So I'm gonna start first with Gap. Thank you, Julian. And thank you for uh, hosting and moderating today's event. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, this is one of our first events uh, uh, in APEC. And as you said correctly, we think there is a huge opportunity for this region to join a uh, collaboration that is already ongoing across Americas and, and uh, Europe. Um, my name is Gabriele Golumbra. I'm the executive director of Finos. Uh, my background is in open source through and through. I've been born and bred in open source, I would say. Uh, and after, in the last five years, we've been growing this uh, uh, now global community of open source collaboration. And about a year ago, joined the Linux Foundation, as you mentioned. So very excited to share what's coming with Finos and why this region should get involved. So thanks, Gab. And, and Dov, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dove Katz. Uh, I'm with Morgan Stanley. I've been in technology here for about 20 years in a variety of roles, ranging from instant messaging systems to foreign exchange to infrastructure, uh, led a DevOps practice, and uh, currently leading a team on global developer productivity for our large group of developers. Uh, you know, and in that is open source. And so I'm very involved in the open source work that's going on here. Um, in addition to that, with the Finos Foundation, I am actually uh, the former, so now emeritus uh, chair of that organization. So I've been very involved with Gab and with everybody else uh, in Finos and kind of helping grow it to where it is and very exciting work and really important work that they're doing. So I'm happy to be here today. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Dov. And uh, Andrew, last but not by least, I mean, Andrew. Hi, Julian. Gab, thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this panel today. I'm really looking forward to it. I think the timing is excellent. Uh, we're seeing a huge amount of, uh, of growth around uh, in open source, not just in financial services, but across all vertical industries in Asia Pacific over just the last uh, couple of quarters. So my name is Andrew Aiken. I'm the global open source leader for Wipro. Uh, in that capacity, uh, my team and I build and bring to market open source based solutions. We do a lot of strategy consulting for our clients. Um, and if you're not familiar with Wipro, we are one of the large global systems integrators. We have around 10 billion in revenue and 200,000 employees. And many, many, many of them are developing on or with open source technologies. And today we're also uh, members of probably around 20 different foundations and projects. And so we're pretty deeply embedded in the ecosystem here. But again, really excited to be a, a part of the panel and, and uh, share our thoughts today. Okay, thank you, Andrew. I think we're gonna hand to Gab now. He's gonna do an overview for us for Finos. Thank you. Uh... So glad to uh, have the opportunity. And again, thank you, uh, Julian, for moderating Andrew and Dove for being here. So I'm gonna um, try to keep it brief, although I tend to speak a lot, I'm, I'm Italian, uh, but I uh, will uh, um, try to share with you 
uh, a little bit of an introduction to what Finos is, some of our key projects and why we think there is a major opportunity, again, for this region and beyond the uh, global financial services uh, uh, system to really engage in open source collaboration. Um, I'm gonna start with a pretty logo slide. Uh, uh, we are very proud to have uh, reached now over 50 members uh, supporting the foundation uh, uh, across you know, our different tiers. But as you can see, we have a very diverse uh, uh, set of supporting members. Um, not only we have, uh, uh, you know, of course, our financial institutions uh, uh, across, again, uh, Europe, uh, uh, United States, uh, uh, Canada, uh, Latin America, and uh, some institutions from Asia Pacific already, especially from Japan. Um, but I am very proud when I look at this slide in terms of also the diversity of corporates that are represented. We have technology companies, we have uh, system integrators, and increasingly we have a representation from industry consortia. The financial services industry has been an industry that you know historically uh, has had the need to collaborate um, generally on open standards, uh, uh, but open source has over the last few years really brought these uh, open collaboration games sort of to the next level. Uh, on top right, you can see our charter. Uh, we are really about uh, uh, enabling collaboration uh, uh, on open source projects, open standards, and through our special interest groups really uh, uh, leveraging open collaboration as a mean to an end to drive innovation and to drive, again, interoperability in an industry that is really uh, in need of uh, a better collaboration model across different parties and the counterparts. Um, of course, we are not measured uh, as a nonprofit. We are not measured just in, in number of members, but really in the number of projects and contributors that produce valuable software for the industry. And so I'm really excited to uh, uh, share with you that for us, uh, 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 we have now reached uh, almost 50 projects in, in the foundation. We won't be able to review them all, uh, but if you happen to uh, 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 go to landscape.finos.org, you can find all of our 50 projects, software projects, standard projects, and special interest groups uh, that we hope you're gonna wanna, by the end of this presentation, be engaged with. Uh, but just to give you an initial preview, really as a foundation across financial services, we have projects spanning uh, really across different areas from you know, data modeling uh, and standardization uh, of, again, both data and APIs through our Legend, uh, uh, Morpher, and FDC3 projects. Legend was originally contributed by Goldman Sachs. Morpher was contributed by Morgan Stanley. I'm sure we hear more from Dove uh, there. Uh, and FDC3 is our uh, interoperability standard across uh, financial desktop uh, applications. But more than that, we have uh, projects uh, really spanning pretty much any layer of the infrastructure, uh, um, including uh, uh, projects around compliant financial infrastructure, uh, uh, visualization libraries, uh, really uh, uh, a whole set of uh, uh, projects, again, specific to financial services, but really uh, uh, contributed to, as you'll see, hopefully, uh, by financial institutions, which is frankly something that is uh, pretty unprecedented when you think about uh, the, the history of open source in this industry. Um, I wanna spend a couple of minutes on the state of our community. Um, 2021 has been a, a, a really pivotal year for our foundation. Uh, not only we have experienced massive growth in terms of members uh, with 18 new members joining the foundation, in terms of projects, uh, pretty much a new project has been contributed to the foundation every month this year, uh, but we have really grown across every metric that typically characterize success of open source contributions, uh, sorry, in open source communities, whether it is contributions or contributor strength, uh, our events, uh, uh, we've grown uh, to produce a podcast, uh, uh, producing training, and I'll touch a little bit on that later, we have actually produced the first formal state of open source in financial services, which really provides a report and a white paper that really provides us with a baseline, um, not only to assess the current state of the industry and adoption of open source 
uh, in this industry, but also uh, a baseline for measure progress uh, over time. And I think there are some really interesting insights there uh, that I'll be sharing with you. Um, for those who are not familiar with Finos, uh, we are in our fourth year uh, in our journey. Uh, we launched in 2018. Uh, since then, um, we originally saw contribution from technology vendors and technology companies, as you would expect. Those are organizations that are more familiar with open source collaboration. But it's with 2020 that we saw a drastic switch in the uh, really leading institutions and leading contributors to our foundation. 2020 uh, uh, brought us major contributions from firms like Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, uh, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Citi, really net new project contributions, years and years of intellectual property uh, contributed by these organizations. Uh, and with 2021, we actually have seen a continuation of this trend to the point that now, uh, I think seven of our eight top contributors actually come from financial institutions. Uh, you know, I'll stop there for a second. Open source and financial services has been for the longest time uh, an oxymoron, <laughs> something that you wouldn't find in the same sentence necessarily. Uh, so for us, it's really encouraging. Uh, and I think it, it speaks volumes to uh, where the industry is at and how serious is actually taking open source, not just consumption. This is an industry that has been like any industry out there really historically consuming open source, but actually engaging in contribution um, to really unleash the full value of open source collaboration. So uh, very proud of that. And uh, I'm sure you'd hear more uh, about the why and the what we are uh, uh, centering this collaboration on uh, from our panelists. Um, one note on us joining the Linux Foundation. Uh, uh, as uh, I mentioned before, we joined the LF uh, mid last year, um, really to expand our footprint. Uh, and really because there was a very strong uh, element of complementarity between the two foundations. Um, the reality is that it's been a fantastic journey. Uh, the lean, having, you know, standing on the shoulder of giants really uh, uh, helped us grow our uh, member base, helped us uh, expand, you know, through the global footprint of the Linux Foundation. APAC is one of the uh, examples of this growth. Uh, um, but really, it has helped us to deliver even more value to the industry and definitely to our members uh, through our LFX platform. Uh, through really a strong synergy in our business model, uh, as well as you know, uh, world-class teams like our events team, like our research team who helped us produce the state of open source uh, report, as well as training that is now available uh, to our community. So, uh, you know, in hindsight, a match made in heaven, and we're really uh, uh, excited to what this collaboration will bring to us uh, as we expand in ABAC. Um, so why is it that financial institutions are, you know, all of a sudden uh, uh, actively engaging in open source collaboration? Well, it's important to understand that, as I said before, institutions have been consuming open source for the longest time, uh, but they're now realizing the value of uh, the ROI, uh, even just in terms of consumption. This is an example based uh, on uh, a business case put together by one of our platinum members who, you know, leveraging perspective, the high uh, uh, throughput data visualization library that is hosted in Finos and was originally contributed by JP Morgan uh, has realized over $3 million savings. Uh, again, this is just one example in terms of consumption as to how open source can help neutralize non-competitive software uh, in a, such a technology centric industry like financial services. Uh, but the reality is that institutions, uh, you know, through a growing open source maturity are actually realizing the value of open source way beyond uh, the technology organization. Of course, uh, we do have projects that uh, really hit more of your typical value of open source collaboration, whether it's, you know, recruiting and retaining uh, talent, increasing efficiency, 
whether it is de-risking your investment in technology vendors through uh, open source. Um, but we are seeing more and more collaborations that are direct, directly driven from the business within financial institutions, either to uh, better respond to client demands, uh, to better collaborate with regulators through open standards and open source components, and to really iterate in uh, you know, solving common industry challenges across uh, uh, peers. Um, and so we continue to really build uh, open source maturity in our industry to really get to the point that open source becomes you know, very much like cloud, a technology pillar uh, of your technology strategy. Um, little plug here, uh, that is the reason why we have uh, an open source readiness special interest group, which is actually chaired by Andrew, uh, will you hear uh, uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, the first and foremost reason why financial institutions engage in Finos uh, when they're not ready to uh, 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 work in open source is really to learn more, not just from us, but from peers that are going through the same journey of enabling legal technology and strategic aspects of open source contributions for you know, their massively distributed uh, workforces. Um, but once you unlock that readiness, then that's when things become even more fun. Uh, I wanna walk you through a couple of projects that are hosted in Finos and uh, really demonstrate the value that open source is delivering to the industry, uh, again, across uh, not only the technology organization, but really across the business. So Legend um, is our uh, uh, visual data modeling platform that was originally contributed by Goldman Sachs in 2020. Uh, over the last year, uh, we have seen not only growth in adoption, uh, um, with several financial institutions evaluating and using the platform, not only in terms of uh, um, integrations, we have now uh, integrations with Databricks, uh, integration with the technology called Morphir, which is hosted in the foundation is underway. Uh, but really we have also seen uh, by hosting the platform, you can actually go and try it and get access to it at finos.org slash legend really the potential for uh, um, inviting known developers, so data modelers, business analysts to directly collaborate with the goal of producing industry-wide standard data models. And we think this is a really uh, a pot, you know, powerful uh, uh, um, way to expand the value of open source collaboration beyond code. Um, another example I touched on it is our FDC3 standard. Uh, it's really becoming more and more adopted by several financial institutions. It's really about creating interoperability across applications on the financial desktop. Um, again, we won't have time to dive deep here. We'll talk about it later, but this is one of our ma most mature projects is approaching this 2.0 version. It is an open standard, but it has increasingly uh, you know, shown the presence of uh, 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 code like our workbench supporting it and training to really grow the uh, um, user base of the standard. So as you can see, a pretty mature project. Um, as we look forward, one of the key initiatives that we're focusing on is the Open RegTech Initiative. Um, you know, if you think about open source collaboration, it's really around Typically, when you think about corporates collaborating, it's really about um, areas where there are common business requirements um, that are non-competitive and that generally help you realize a cost saving by mutualization. So we actually think that in the short term, uh, financial institutions mutualizing the cost of regulatory implementation by having shared open source uh, implementations has the potential to deliver tremendous value uh, to the financial institutions involved, uh, and honestly to anyone given that this is open source. But in the long term, we have now entertained uh, several conversations with regulators across the world, uh, in the US, in Europe, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, um, to really bring them into the fold earlier in the process and have them, you know, hopefully before my grandkids grow up, 
produce machine readable regulation that can be then implemented in the open. One example that we're working on here uh, in this area is uh, the idea of uh, creating a cloud compliance end-to-end -end, uh, suite uh, that really can provide both infrastructure as code and uh, uh, compliance tests to really prove compliance against uh, financial services regulation when deploying data and workloads in cloud. Uh, this is an exciting partnership with the EDMC, the Enterprise Data Management Council. Uh, I uh, uh, exhort you to look at the link down there and we'll talk about it later in the panel uh, to get engaged. Uh, we are actively recruiting maintainers for this project. Um, now, as I go to close, uh, I just wanna share with you a couple of nuggets from our State of Open Sourcing Financial Services survey. Um, the reality is that, and hopefully some of the projects that we talked about gave, give you, uh, you know, a good place to start, but for the financial services industry, it's really living, you know, what I refer to as an open source renaissance. Um, Organizations in the industry are now on par when it comes to understanding that open source can be a massive driver for innovation, uh, for talent retention, and just honestly for cost savings uh, uh, and efficiency. Uh, and not only when it comes to collaborating on a financial services specific software, but also when it comes to influencing you know, upstream uh, um, you know, AI ML, uh, cloud, DevOps, this is one of the powerful reasons why we joined the Linux Foundation to be able to influence projects like Kubernetes, Hyperledger, the Linux kernel as an industry. Um, but the reality is that there's still a long way to go here. Um, whilst most firms have a policy on consumption, um, still more than two thirds of the organizations don't have an OSPO, an open source program office. Uh, and we think, again, by the fundings from our survey that that is due to the need of ever increased leadership in, uh, uh, you know, sorry, seniority in open source leadership, as well as, you know, continuing to push that open source readiness angle uh, across the organization to empower, you know, these large workforces to contribute to open source. Uh, in case you're interested, and I really uh, uh, think you'll find something interesting here. Here's the link. And of course, we're gonna share the slides uh, after this uh, for you to get access uh, to the uh, State of Open Sourcing Financial Services report. You'll find a lot of information in there and I'm sure you'll, you'll find yourself you know, represented in this survey. Um, I'll close by saying that uh, uh, we think this is only the beginning. There is a major opportunity here. Uh, not only financial institutions are engaging in open source, but VCs, uh, on the left, we have an article from Andres Anorovitz from just about a month ago, um, are really seeing the potential for open source to drive uh, you know, a new generation of financial services uh, technology. Um, not only you know, in the regions that we are currently present in, you know, mainly uh, US and Europe, but as you can see in the middle, uh, Asia and China, uh, even the China regulators, Chinese regulators are recommending financial institutions to engage in open source, not only consumption, but actually contribution. I mean, this is a massive, uh, coming from the regulators. And that's why we are continuing to build this relationship with regulators as we think they could be a really fundamental driver to accelerate uh, our growth. And with that, uh, I will wrap by saying, uh, by sharing a couple of links, we hope to see you in our community. Uh, our community is actually open to everyone. You don't need to a member to start contributing and to start participating and consuming our software. And just so you know, it's not just about code. Uh, we'd love to hear from you in terms of use cases that we can solve together as an industry on a global scale. Uh, we'd love to, to have your advocacy, especially in this region where we're starting to expand, uh, having vocal advocates around open source and Finos, uh, it would be fantastic uh, for our community. And with that, I will uh, uh, stop it here and uh, uh, with a couple of minutes delay, pass it back to Julian, who's gonna moderate the panel. 
thank you for your time here. Thank you, Gab. That was awesome. Definitely. I love the word renaissance there, you know, the, the rebirth. Amazing what's happened in, is it only four years since Venos? I thought it was longer than that, right? Three and a half. Three and a half. An amazing yeah. amount of activity that's happened. Uh, so uh, the panel, I think, is going to discuss a lot of what you, you've talked about there today. Uh, so I'll be talking to Andrew and Dob and, and Gab, please get in, involved as well, right? So first, we've talked about uh, about how, and if you could maybe drop the, uh, the presentation. So um, so we'll talk about, I think, I think we're going to do it in a kind of two phases, where we are today and where do we go from, from here? Uh, and then maybe a call of action, how, how one can get involved uh, in open source. As you said, Gab, everyone, everyone is welcome. That's a, common, a commonality amongst all Linux Foundation projects. So, you know, everyone is welcome. You don't just have big technologies. There's people write documentation. Many, many people who can get involved in, in, this, in this process. So to so set the scene, where are we today? So I think I'm going to start with Andrew and maybe Dov, maybe you could uh, to add to that. So where and why, where and how and where? is open source being taken by financial service companies looking at that globally where do you see it today well <clears throat> open source from a consumption perspective is pervasive throughout throughout financial institutions and has been growing in that pervasiveness for the last few years in particular so Banks have been consuming open source for <clears throat> quite some time, 15 years or more. Uh, some of the earliest adopters outside of, of the technology vendor ecosystems and startups uh, at the infra level and over the last five or six years, moving on up the stack. And, and today we see open source being consumed by banks across all the stack, uh, all stack, uh, all the technology stack. Um, we're also beginning to see it more and more uh, being consumed across all geographies. So obviously, me in North America um, see a lot of uh, primarily see a lot of adoption today from a geographic perspective. But <clears throat> we are beginning to talk to more and more and more of our clients in Asia Pacific and even in the <clears throat> in the Middle East. Um, we have a project with uh, the country of Oman building out an open source center of excellence where they want to help use open source to drive modernization and transformation in both public and private sector entities, including their financial institutions. So <clears throat> we are seeing we are seeing open source becoming really pervasive from a consumption perspective. From a publishing or contributing back, uh, we're seeing banks are very, very active, right? Uh, if we did a some research a couple of years ago, actually, where we looked at at the top ten banks uh, by assets under management, and they were engaged in over five thousand projects on GitHub, and this was two years ago. So banks are contributing. Uh, sometimes the banks know they're contributing and sometimes the banks don't know they're contributing. So that does point out that there is a need for uh, more and more governance uh, of <clears throat> their own developer community. But again, it's, we're seeing it up and down the stack and across uh, all, all geos today. Uh, I'd like to give one, um, the topic of, of this panel is open source and how, how can you use open source to drive innovation. So I'd like to give one specific example to kind of set the context before I let Dove respond here. Um, <clears throat> so we were working with large one large bank in, in the UK uh, a couple of years ago, and they wanted to try and replace most of their proprietary logging and monitoring, uh, both infra and, and application software with open source. And... What they found is that I was saying, you know, come for the money, stay for everything else, right? So you, you come because, and in this instance, the bank thought they were going to save a lot of money and they wanted to moder mod modernize the, the software, the architecture that, uh, of the software that they were using today. Um, <clears throat> but what they found that was the real benefit for them, and they're very, very clear on this, was secondary innovation. And the reason I call it secondary is there's a huge amount of innovation that the open source community is, is creating and driving themselves. So they took this primary innovation that exists in the open source community. And then internally, they were able to customize the software for their particular use cases and, and environment. And internally, their own developers began creating in, in uh, special purpose utilities and features and functions that they had never been able to do before. And so we call this secondary innovation. Some of that they contributed upstream, upstream back to the open source projects. Some of that, some they, they kept for themselves because they were so special purpose uh, additions to the software. Um, <clears throat> but it was a, it, they were the ones who came back to us and said, hey, 
yes, there are financial benefits, but we are investing more and more and more specifically because open source is driving more innovation in the bank. So I'll, I'll leave it there and, and let Dov respond to the question. Thanks, Andrew. And I think secondary innovation is definitely one of those things that uh, you know, we experience here. So I can, I can in firsthand tell you, and it's not just about the let's extend something we brought in. It's also about the, I can now hire people with skills around this framework. So the, mm -hmm. the ability to attract talent that is coming and hitting the ground running to then build from there versus starting from scratch with some boilerplate stuff that had to be created. That, that's very different uh, in a world of open source. I'll just I'll start with by saying one thing. You know, when I joined earlier, let's say within the last 20 years, so early in my career, the very common comment that I used to hear as a very junior employee was, we're a bank, not a software company which is ironic because most of the banks have more software technology employees than bankers right now. But that aside, the uh, I kind of agree and disagree. I, I disagree because, well, technically, like the majority of things that we in the industry does are powered by technology. Um, but, but on the other hand, we're not a tech shop. We don't need to be building proprietary software. If you look at the, the kind of concept that they talk about in, in business of core and context, where you take all the company's activities and you take the ones that are distinguishing them from their competitors, and those are their core activities. And then you take the context, which is everything else that's keeping them in business, but isn't necessarily a differentiator. You know, Right now in the industry, the way in which intellectual property is protected at financial services go back five years, it treated all that software the same. And so as a result, everything was secret. So we couldn't share anything. We couldn't release anything. We couldn't do any of that. If you look at it today, the, the kind of movement that I, I'd say Finos definitely helped accelerate and create the, the open source readiness group has allowed us to kind of separate the context from the core. So trading algorithms, all of that, we're you know, never going to release the things that are you know, proprietary, that are a source of, yeah, and for those secondary innovation, let's not start from scratch. Let's start from like 75% implemented because we've got open source, but for the context, not only should we uh, you know, not be starting them from scratch, only, we should only start them if we've proven there isn't something outside that we can improve on. And if we really are convinced that there's something uh, new, net new, that, that it doesn't exist out there, we gotta be so confident we should be doing that out in the open because it must be a problem other people have too. And so Finos has given us a vehicle for doing that. So the problems, whether it was shared infrastructure, whether it's compliant infrastructure, whether it's now reg tech, it's all of these cases that you know, we're better off doing with our peers who are su you know, suffering through the same challenges. Uh, those are the ones that are becoming more attractive to work on in a collaborative setting um, and just greasing the wheels of how we can give back. So it isn't you know, 20,000 projects consumed and 500 uh, you know, you know, where we're contributing back. That, inequality needs to change, that's really uh, you know, an area that we're seeing happen now. And those are even with the, any of the frameworks, visualization, UI toolkits, it doesn't really matter. It's just stuff that we shouldn't be owning ourselves because, and I'll mention this, I'll, I'll close with this. The thing that's happened over the last couple of years that hasn't happened before is because there are very important players depending on stuff outside that they're not able to contribute back, that furthers the impression that these projects are dying, which is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that causes projects that may have a future to not really look like they have one because the people with all the improvement intellectual, you know, intellectual property can't give it back. So now we've got these great ideas that die because there's a privacy issue. So this has really been a big, uh, um, I guess, renaissance of that, um, that, that provides you know, projects that deserve a lifeline to have one because the right innovation is able to go back out. And uh, Julian, part of your question, and some dub sets really sparked a response here. Part of your question was about how, how are, yeah. how are they being consumed? I want to, some the earliest conversations we typically have with, with our clients in highly regulated industries is the first step is always triage, right? They're, they're concerned that they're leaking IP. They're concerned about cybersecurity related issues. They're concerned about licensing issues. So typically the first step is, okay, let's find out what the, what the scope of the issue is. Is there an act, actually an issue there? Figure out the scope, put some remedies in place, policy process, tooling, and automation. And then we can actually get to helping them realize the real benefits of, of open source consumption, which is, as Gab mentioned earlier, around innovation, thought leadership, developer recruitment and retention, and, and so on and so forth. Um, but the point, point being, uh, 
there are, those issues can be addressed. They can be resolved. FinOS is an incredible resource for best practices in this area. Um, so for those of you in the audience who, who may be facing challenges from your security teams and from your legal teams, your procurement teams, FinOS is all about sharing best practices, <clears throat> excuse me, and being able to engage with peers who have already gone through and who are going through these processes right now. Yeah. So, uh, and, and and where do you see? Where do you see? Um, so those those are great. Thank you. Those that was a some great uh, uh, answers there. So uh, where do you see um, uh, Finos helping in this collaboration? Have you seen the way the collaborations? I think uh, of you were mentioning a little bit about maybe. The banks are more involved rather than the vendors before. Uh, how do you see that changing, and how is, is Finos helping in that collaboration? I'll just I'll just say I think Finos has been instrumental in allowing that for two reasons. One is one is I think a, a fundamental reason. They literally are helping get the organizational constructs in place necessary for banks to be able to do this. So helping, whether it's helping set up like an open source program office to helping get the legal agreements and compliance and, and best practices out in place in the large organizations. You know, that was, I think, almost, that, was, that was like the first big project of Finos that any of the banks were allowed to participate in. And that, that I think unlocked the doors that you saw in 2020 when, when, when we could really deliver things together. The other thing that I think works to the benefit of the industry that I think is, is fun, and I think we had a similar conversation about the conference we just did in New York, is there's a healthy bit of competition with all of the most promising technology leaders of the industry getting together regularly and, and kind of embracing what is for sure the future way of doing development, in that everybody wants to get on that leaderboard that Gab showed in his presentation. Everybody who's doing this amazing technology work is encouraged to do this. It attracts talent. It you know, retains talent, it gives people the right recognition and it's the right recognition for doing the right thing. So it's not like uh, people are meaninglessly throwing things out there. This is, this is a strategy that's here to stay. And so by having us all together and using some of our peers as examples to our senior leadership to say, hey, look, you know, they're doing it, we should be doing it. it. It provides an additional level of legitimacy as senior leadership starts to buy into it, both on the business and in technology. And, and without Finos, I don't think that would really happen. So I think that there's a, a lot to say for having an organization that brings a bunch of players to the table. And, and uh, you know, really Finos gets all the credit for that. It was great to see at the Strategy Summit, what was that, three weeks ago now in, in New York. At, at the tables, it was great to see, you could tell they were developers, they were geeking out on some, on a variety of these different projects, right? But you look at the badges, and they were badges from Goldman, from JP, from Morgan, from Deutsche Bank, from on and on at the same table, talking about how to solve these shared problems that they have. And again, to, to Dove's point, that's, that's Finos is driving that ability to, to create this shared collaboration amongst traditional deep competitors. I think there's an element of trust. I'm going to jump in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as fun as is, uh, as it's the Italian talking about trust here, but uh, um, I think we were able to really create not only trust across these organizations, you know, candidly, five or six years ago when we were really incubating this project, you know, the questions uh, were much more along the lines of, you know, competitive type questions. What's this firm doing? What's this other firm doing? Of course, questions that I'm not able to answer, of course. Uh, but right now we are seeing uh, both at corporate level and really in, when individuals engage with our community, mm -hmm. there is a lot of trust on, hey, uh, we are actually solving the same problem and B, uh, um, this is, not lip service. Actually, banks are putting their developers where their money is and they're investing in developing these communities. So really it's creating a very uh, positive dynamic where, whereby banks, fintechs, regulators and individuals, they all are able to get some degree of value from open source collaboration. So I think that's, that's an important flywheel that continues to really uh, you know, power our growth. 
Can I just add one more thing? Sorry, this may be the only question you get to this rate, but uh, I, I want to point out one one other data point that is, uh, I guess, qualitative in nature, which is you know, I'm on a lot of pretty senior technology, architecture, strategy kind of meetings. And it used to be the case where I was the one beating on the drum of, hey, we're doing this new thing. Let's get this out to open source. I hear Finos mentioned in these meetings by people other than myself and people in my organization at least once every two weeks in these meetings. And that is indication that the culture is permeated, that people are thinking, hey, wait a minute, we're doing something. We probably don't need to devote all these resources to do the same thing that our peer is doing without going and engaging them. Uh, and, and again, this is just a testimony that, you know, it starts from the bottom up. You've got people top down. You've got to get it from both angles. But that, that support, you know, once you get it in place, it becomes cultural and it doesn't really need the same level of uh, constant push from a couple of champions. It just becomes part of the culture. So I think that's what we're seeing happen now in the banks that are at this part of the maturity curve, where they've been participating up until now. Now they're showing up at the conference, sharing their software, doing things with their peers. I think they're at a point now where it's kind of getting baked into the culture and therefore it is, it's going to become a lot more self-sustaining uh, you know, now than, which I think for banks that are looking to join that fold, think about, you know, we can have a bunch of large financials tell you now, look, it does make it into the culture. Here are some of the things you need. Uh, and then just it's it's worth getting started because we're all going to be there eventually. So you just don't want to miss out on the action. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so ultimately, so so in, in terms of you know trust, right? So is is there a kind of areas that people are looking at the places that the, the you know the core maybe and maybe there's competitive advantage areas? Uh, are there kind of different areas that that, that, that the challenges that the, the banks are face that that more OSS is more suitable for? More suitable for, oh, go ahead, Andrew, sorry. No, I was, I was just gonna say that's really following on to my response to the earlier question. We, we, yeah. are, we are seeing open source really being adopted at all layers of the stack and not just for, for I I existing traditional, uh, software applications, but for new emerging leading edge stuff, right? We all know open source is driving blockchain and cryptocurrency and distributed ledger. And now we're talking about NFTs and the metaverse and so on and so forth, which is all going to be open source based, right? Um, so it really is, it, it is very, very pervasive. And one thing to, to I, I think there's a mindset for new finan for financial institutions that are earlier on their open source journey. It, it's this notion of acceptance. Open source is here. It's here to stay. And it's only going to be more and more and more important to you over time. So figure it out. Right. And, and Finos is the way to help help you do that. Do you want to add to that, or yeah? Oh well, no, I think I think Andrew put it put it perfectly. Uh, so so I have nothing else to add to that. Okay, so 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 those are the kind of challenge, and that's what's existing today. So then maybe as at the time, maybe we'll we'll flick uh, uh, maybe focus on on Asia Pacific, right? So what are the what do you see uh, with your knowledge? Obviously, as you say, mostly happening in, in other parts of the world. And Asia Pacific, obviously, a great opportunity. Uh, where do you see the main kind of collaboration opportunities here, or, or, or would you sense that there are in Asia Pacific that people uh, would, would look to or should look to? So I'd, I'd like to start by saying that the same opportunities that exist in every region exist in Asia Pacific. However, you know, there are a whole different set of regulators out there with problems that are common to people who operate out there. And, uh, you know, therefore the reg tech initiative that we're doing in Finos now in kind of North America, Europe, is one that will easily have a parallel effort out in Asia. And not to mention all the global financials are operating in that region and will need to uh, you know, work there as well. Again, these are, these are context things. These are things that you know, we need to do to stay in business. And you know, the, the more forward thinking regulators are in engaging with the industry's technology groups, the, the, the better their outcome is gonna be in terms of how systematically implemented these regulations are. Um, otherwise, you're left to uh, a bunch of uh, different organizations doing their own interpretation to lead to their own technology implementation, and then having to find a way to assure that it's actually satisfactory. So it really benefits us to go there. So I'd say you know, regulatory implementation is one. I could tell you with, with uh, you know, recent press of uh, 
many uh, large multinationals getting banking licenses and the like out to operate in, uh, in China, that there is a, uh, a bunch of areas uh, in infrastructure that need to be segregated. And one of the common things that's come up in a debate that I've had outside the organization and a little bit inside is, you know, what is considered data? Because if it's data, it has to reside in certain places, is code data. And, you know, could you even consider um, you know, because if you can't transfer IP between kind of the two parts of the organization, it becomes very difficult to innovate uh, successfully. Could you open source things just to get from your right hand to your left hand? Are there, there are so many opportunities there to think about in terms of the challenges of what is a way to respect uh, uh, the regulatory concerns in the region at the same time providing them what they're after, which is a safer, you know, more transparent market. Uh, which, which many times is going to lead to you know, better technology, better open source adoption and, and the like. So I think there's a lot of opportunities like that. And then I'll add one last thing that I thought of um, a, a bit earlier, and I don't know enough about it to give it justice, but maybe uh, Andrew might in his, uh, in his uh, Oman uh, partnership, which is in the Middle East, there are other forms of, we'll call them regulatory regimes, which are you know, Islamic banking system. And that's an area that's unique to that region. And so to the extent that there are things that need to be implemented and demonstrate uh, you know, compliance to earn the trust of the customer, to earn the trust of that whole system, those are a great, great opportunities that are local to the region where there's collaboration opportunities that may already be going on. Maybe this is a place Finos can help as well. Andrew, do you want to add to that? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll take a more narrow view. Uh, but I can't really reflect on, on the regulatory in, in environment like Dove can. So I'll take a more narrow view. Uh, ways to get engaged and collaborate. There, it's not just through just because Finos's uh, uh, members are are right now primarily in North in North America based doesn't mean that that uh, the member that financial institutions from Asia Pacific can't get engaged. As as Gap said during his presentation, you don't even have you don't have to join yet. Right at some point, it may make sense for you, but get involved. Uh, I like to call it lurk and learn, right? So get involved in the projects, right? You can just lurk, you can listen, you can do whatever. It's really simple, and not just not not just the Finos projects, but in, in I, I know that there are dozens, hundreds of local users groups in for all the the dominant open source technologies uh, across Asia Pacific. I know we, we get all sorts of, of announcements of that uh, at, at Wipro, our developer community does, but there are a lot of other initiatives to get involved in that are, that are relevant here. There's uh, Open Compliance Summit, which is actually next week, which is talking about uh, cybersecurity issues, compliance issues, um, <clears throat> and how do you put in place uh, internal regimes to make sure that you're governing open source efficiently and effectively, right? That, that's next week. Um, SPDX, a soft, software package data exchange, is a project that's creating a standardized bill of materials for open source, also is very, very active in, in Asia Pacific. Open Chain is active in Asia Pacific. So there's a whole bunch of initiatives that people can get, can get involved in, but it's really important to start with your own house and make sure that you, you address your, your own, whether it's security or risk or legal, make sure that you uh, uh, create the internal environment that allows your developer community uh, and your leadership to actually get engaged, right? If, if you don't address that first, it's you, you're gonna hit a wall. I just wanna add uh, one, maybe two small points here. I know we're short mm -hmm. on time, but I think, um, you know, kind of bringing together uh, what both Dove and, and Andrew said, um, I think there's certainly an element of, uh, you know, learning from peers across the ocean who are already uh, undergoing the journey. So there's an element, again, more from lurk and learn, but of course, as you know, you join us as members, as you join our board, there's really a unique opportunity to sort of sit at the same table uh, uh, and make decisions that honestly can impact you know, the global financial system. Uh, I think that's really in the long term, uh, what we would like to see Fino solving, you know, uh, 11 play field across uh, different regions. But there's certainly areas where APAC is uh, uh, leading. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about the massive innovation that comes, you know, uh, in the retail space, uh, in the payment space, 
um, you know, not just related to crypto, above and beyond crypto. I think there are areas, honestly, again, uh, at the crossroads of retail and fintech, where potentially uh, one could argue that APAC is further ahead than other regions. And so there are really elements of leadership to bring uh, to the foundation. And let me just wrap by saying that the Linux Foundation, Finos, and the Linux Foundation is uniquely positioned to solve, uh, you know, global uh, type challenges, including some of those who Dove was, was addressing, you know, uh, we have massive experience, not only intellectual property, but in export control and, you know, very important, you know, knowing that you can collaborate on a piece of software, especially as a regulated industry, knowing that someone has been taking care of this type of problems in cross region collaboration for now, you know, over 10 years, it's invaluable. Uh, and so I think there are very, very compelling opportunities for this region to engage. And I think I think I just suggest, sorry, Julian, um, uh, that with the passionate tech leaders who are already part of the board and the member companies, for those looking to get their leadership engaged, it might be worth allowing you know some of us to represent Finos and have that conversation. Yeah. Much easier to do these types of things, kind of not in writing off the record, but an informal conversation about what exactly we do and, and why it works. Th those kinds of things go a long way in providing legitimacy. So it's not just a third party organization coming and saying you should be part of us. Uh, and uh, you know, really, it's that's how we collaborate with each other. And uh, you know, we share our approaches. We should be sharing those approaches with other prospective uh, institutions that are looking to get involved. I've yeah. never heard of a bank being disappointed in their engagement with Finos, right? And we deal with a lot of them. Mm. I've never heard one say, "Boy, I wish we hadn't joined." <laughs> and 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 there are so many. Actually, just just adding to that, there are so many banks. Uh, global banks who are already here, right? In India, yeah. in China, they're, they're, they're already here, right? Whether they're developing for something for, for some part of the world. So there's so many developers in, in this community, in this world, and fintech. Mm -hmm. You said Hong Kong, Singapore, fintech, enormous fintech uh, hotbeds uh, here. So as we're coming clo closer and closer to the, to the end of this, uh, um, what, what, how do people get involved in Finos? So, you know, I think you have working groups, working groups and Finos, of course, there's, there's, as you said, there's leaders, there's developers, there's people who want to get involved in projects. What's, what's the best way uh, for an individual watching this today or on YouTube or wherever later? How should they get involved? What's the easiest way for those kind of different groups? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm happy to take this one. <laughs> and actually, I might even have a slide here that we can use as a, as a background. <laughs> see it here. It just so happened, I just so happened to have a slide about that. <laughs> what are the odds? Um, but yeah, now, as I was sort of hinting before, um, first and foremost, uh, uh, our community is open to everyone. So consumption of our projects, you know, go to github.com slash finos, go to landscape.finos.org, uh, uh, find a project that does, you know, uh, not only interest you, but it actually has the potential to solve the strategic challenge for your company uh, and consume it. Uh, and soon the hope is that you get drawn into contributing to it because you don't want to maintain your own copy of that code. That does not, you know, make you realize the full ROI of open source. Um, but it's not only about code. Uh, uh, our meetings, both special interest groups and project meetings are open to everyone. So here's the, is a link, we'll share the slides to our community calendar, uh, the hosts, all the information about all the different meetings that happen in Finos. Uh, and of course, you know, you can stay up to date uh, by signing up to our many uh, uh, informative mm -hmm. publications. That said, I kind of will reiterate on what I said before, mm -hmm especially if you're working for a financial institution, it's not just about code. Our community would really benefit from hearing, uh, uh, you know, in the problem space, what are use cases or challenges that we should be collaborating on? There are indeed uh, shared challenges across the industries and even in this case across regions. Uh, Finos can and will act as a sounding board uh, for some of these ideas. So don't, you know, if you're not open source ready, if you don't have a piece of code to contribute just yet, of course, we want you to get there and we'll help you through our open source readiness program. But, you know, 
come to us, engage with us, engage in our special interest groups. Feel free to email our mailing lists and send ideas. Uh, this is a very fertile community when it comes to uh, collaboration. So hopefully that gives you an initial idea of how you can get engaged and hopefully, uh, you know, become a member of Finus. No, okay, so uh, yeah, and, and I, I believe there is a meetup as well. I think Andrew King runs that meetup in the region as well. We've got James McLeod, you can contact me. There's a lot of people who help. And as you say, there are many members also involved. So, uh, so I'm now going to do a lightning round, light things up for a little while. <laughs> so I'm going to have one question for all of you, right? Um, so between one and 10, how, much, how far do you see adoption of open source by financial institutions today and then in 10 years' time? So one to 10, 10 being off the charts, amazing, one being, oh dear. So today and uh, in, 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 uh, in, in 10 years time, I'll do this in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna start with Dove. Dove is before A, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm usually A, A, I'm okay. usually first and last. Yeah, even in alternative <laughs> right. alphabet, okay. Uh, Andrew, I'll let you go first to follow the oh, alphabetical. No, no, no. All right, so we'll Andrew go. We'll, we'll do it alphabetically. Sorry, my bad. We'll do Andrew first. <laughs> so, all right. So <clears throat> today, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're seeing adoption up and down throughout the enterprise. But the caveat uh, on that is it's not uniform even within the same financial institution. Right. So. Uh, I wish I had a nickel for every time I've heard that every financial institution is the most distributed enterprise on the planet, right? Um, <clears throat> and to some degree, that's actually the case. So we'll see, we, we do see open source and may permeate one line of business. It might be wealth management or it might be payments or whatever, but then we'll see elsewhere, maybe because it's a different, a different organizational structure or it's a different geo where there is little adoption or it's, or it's very ad hoc. So, Lots of open source, not evenly distributed throughout financial institutions today. So my, my number today is five. Okay. okay. Uh, in 10 years, 9.5. Uh, again, open source is going to be more and more and more important over time. No one's going to no one's going to rewind this clock, right? It's 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 too late for that, uh, and we're going to see it in more and more niche areas where it may not be widely adopted today. Uh, but there will be every organization is on its own open source journey, and some and and that's. Uh, so a little bit of a pitch for the open source readiness group, which I am the, the chair of here, we can, you know, I hope you will, will join and we'll show you how to actually move down your own journey, how to move from different stages of maturity and get to whatever level of maturity is most appropriate for your organization. But in 10 years, some, some organizations just won't be that far down the journey. So I will say 9.5. 9.5. I have a 9.5. Okay. So I see that some people on the chat also coming up with some numbers interesting from the audience. So, uh, yeah. Dav, any, any, what's, what's your, are you more yeah. left optimistic? No, I'd, I'd, I'd say, I'd say that we're, we're, we're between a three and a four now in terms of how much adoption I'm, I'm going to call it the bi-directional open source because everyone's been using open source 15 years, right? Plus okay. but the, the, the mentality of open source, that new adoption, I'll put it like a three or four with uh, the ability to do it now at a seven or eight because Finos has made that possible with, with a lot of the, uh, the thing. But the, the actual where we are, I think, is a three or four. There are great institutions you've seen contribute some projects that were shown on some of the screens. And then there's a bunch that are struggling to get that over the last hurdle to get that approval process. Um, and where I see us going is, you know, 10, we're going to be a 10 eventually because the people that aren't a 10 are not going to be around uh, at some point in the future. All right. So now, when that is, it's hard to say. So 10 years from now, I'll put it at an eight. Doesn't really matter. But, you know, it's going to asymptotically converge to 10 because, uh, you know, those who can't, those who don't go there will not be able to compete at the pace of innovation of those who did go there. And that's just, uh, you know, you're seeing that with the fintechs now, and it's, it's putting a challenge on the whole industry for the same reason. So that, that's where everyone's going. As Andrew said, we can't rewind the clock. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter when we get there because we're going there. Um, and, uh, you know, but now I'd say we're still for every, for every amazing story we hear on open source, there are so many institutions that haven't yet uh, gone that journey or crossed that chasm, as we used to say, gap. Uh, and, uh, therefore I'd put it at a little, a little less than five, uh, uh, at the moment. Okay. And it's interesting. You said it could be a seven or eight if people 
you know, we have the got. potential to be that we've got yeah. all the things yeah. in place now that weren't in place in the past. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, and, and Gab? I think I'm uh, uh, pretty aligned with Dove. Uh, yeah. You know, I would say between Andrew and Dove, I would put it at a four as we are right now, just as a realization of there has been a major progress in the last five years, you know, we're probably, you know, five years ago, especially when it comes to contribution, uh, we were, you know, close to zero. Um, again, not maybe zero, but very close yeah. to it. Um, and I think, honestly, where we can go, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. I'm, I'm, I would say over 10, if you ask me, but <laughs> since you're limiting me, since you're normalizing me to 10, uh, then I would say 10, because the reality is, uh, we are seeing not only, uh, you know, seismic shifts in the industry when it comes to uh, 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 the industry and even the incumbent banks are behaving more and more uh, like technology companies. And so it's not only sort of the fintechs that are, you know, uh, uh, becoming or, or you know, uh, entering the business of of old incumbents, older incumbents, but it's also incumbents that are actually becoming more and more technology companies. And so when you pair that with, um, you know, the potential advantages that regulators can have, not only in, you know, uh, leveraging existing open standards or open source projects, but really starting to play an active role in defining how a regulation uh, can be implemented and fulfilled uh, through open source, man, you know, I think, again, the sky is the limit. As um, Angela Strange at, at uh, Andriy Senorovic put it, um, you know, open source will catalyze the financial services industry biggest revolution to date in the next 10 years. And, you know, this is pretty powerful coming, again, not only from the financial institutions, but really from the fintech side. We're seeing a strong convergence uh, of the different parties. So I think, again, we have really an opportunity here to redefine the core building blocks of the financial services system on a global scale. And that's why I'm really, really excited to start working more uh, with uh, the AVAC region. And what, what was the number today? I didn't catch the number today. I saw infinity and beyond is, is in 10 years, right? So... Infinity and beyond, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, in haircut, yeah. <laughs> But but today was a so so I think it's four today, infinity today. And beyond moving forward. Okay, excellent. So I love that optimistic. We'll have to archive this and come back in 10 years yes. and, uh, and and see what see. Hold me see. on that. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. I think we've we've, we've come to 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 the end uh, of, of things. So thank you, uh, Andrew, thank you, uh, Dove, thank you, Gabriel for for uh, Gab for, for for your great uh, and we hope to see you more and more in, in Asia Pacific. Uh, thank you for those who are listening today. Um, and, uh, and thank you also for James and Andrew who, who have helped uh, put this together today, right, and others. Uh, and yeah, please do get involved. And, and as I think Gab uh, reinforced, everyone is welcome. So please do reach out. Uh, there's many people that you can reach out to uh, in the FinOS community and Linux Foundation community. So with that, I say thank you very much. And everyone, take care. Thank you.